when trying for a conception we often talk about hormonal balance and a good lifestyle in order to improve the chances of conception but did you know the anatomy of a female reproductive system has an equally important role to play to help a woman conceive so in this video we're going to primarily talk about fallopian tubes in relation to your fertility in this video we'll cover the anatomy of the fallopian tube what is the primary role of these fallopian tubes in order to aid conception and what are the issues a woman can face in relation to these tubes that can be a cause of infertility so if this is something that you would like to understand more about definitely watch this video till the end hi everyone i am dr zainab tajir i am a homeopathy consultant and psychological counselor I specialize in helping women balance their hormones and help couples conceive naturally through homeopathy and holistic lifestyle changes. I create a lot of content around balancing your hormones and improving fertility in men and women. So if this is something that interests you, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Now, the fallopian tubes are these thin tube-like structures that are present on either side of the uterus and they help the egg that is released from the ovary to travel inside the uterus. So the fallopian tube has three primary parts the infundibulum the ampulla and the isthmus the infundibulum primarily contains these thin projections fimbriae that help to catch the egg as soon as it is released from the ovary and to help it travel within the fallopian tube the isthmus is the part where the fertilization occurs so when the egg enters the isthmus if during that time there is there are sperms that are present within the fallopian tube they can fertilize your egg and that is when the embryo is formed and then this embryo travels down the fallopian tube and implants itself within the endometrial cavity and the isthmus is the part that connects to the uterus the primary function of the fallopian tube is to facilitate the transport of the egg and even if fertilization has occurred it has to help the embryo travel down within the uterus but there are certain problems that can occur in relation to these fallopian tubes that can be a cause of infertility the most common ones are blockages in these fallopian tubes that can occur either because of scar tissue development due to pathological concerns like endometriosis etc also there is possible that there might be inflammation in these fallopian tubes which is called as salpingitis or pid that is pelvic inflammatory disease There is also possible that there can be blockages because of hydrosalphanes, pyosalphanes, so accumulation of water, pus, etc., within these fallopian tubes. Now, if a woman presents with blockage in one of the fallopian tubes, it is still possible for her to conceive naturally if her second tube is patent and her ovary is functioning properly. But if both the tubes are blocked, then a laparoscopic surgery does become mandatory in order to clear these blockages. In some women, when the fallopian tube is not functioning actively, it is possible that post fertilization, the embryo instead of traveling down the fallopian tube and implanting itself into the endometrial cavity, implants itself within the fallopian tube. which is then called as an ectopic pregnancy an ectopic pregnancy is actually a life threatening condition when detected early it can be treated medically through certain medications but otherwise it would require a surgical approach in order to avoid any complications so you do understand that understanding the anatomy of your female reproductive system is also very very important in order to understand why a couple is unable to conceive In order to figure out if both your fallopian tubes are patent there is a test called as the hysterosalpingography in which a dye is inserted within the uterus and this dye then enters inside the fallopian tube and spills itself into the pelvis we do take x-rays at this point to check if the dye can freely pass through the fallopian tubes or not and that helps us understand if the fallopian tubes are open and they are functioning well Also sometimes diagnostic laparoscopies can be done to understand if the fallopian tubes are structurally normal. Understanding the anatomy of these fallopian tubes does become crucial when you are trying to conceive and I genuinely hope that this video has been helpful for you. Now if you have any more questions related to this please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and also thank you so much for sticking by till the end. I will see you again next week.